Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for R. This screencast gives you some advice on judging if your data is normally distributed and includes section 8.4, how to check whether your data have a normal distribution using the chi-squared goodness of fit test. If your data is normally distributed, then you can use a set of tests called parametric tests that are more powerful in discriminating significant from non-significant results. This is because the equation expects your data to conform to a pattern called the Gaussian or normal distribution and so can make more accurate predictions. Thus, researchers often like to do tests to determine if the data is normal and we will outline some in this screencast. But please note that absolute justification that a small data set is normally distributed is almost impossible to do. One common approach can be illustrated using the data from table 8.3 shown in the bar chart. We can calculate a mean and standard deviation from this data and then predict the distribution of values we should get if the data is normal, as we can see from the underlaid bar chart in pink. We can then perform a chi-squared or similar test to see if our values are consistent with those expected values. This generates a probability and if it is below 0.05, we can state the observed and expected data are significantly different and that our data is not normal. How to do this chi-squared test is detailed in the book, however, many programs have several other tests to determine if your distribution could be normal, and in this screencast we will outline the use of the Shapiro-Wilk test, which is the most accurate test for small sample sizes. Again, a significant result indicates that your data is not normally distributed. This is an important consideration with these tests. They tell you if your data is not normal. What they do not do is tell you that your data is normal. What if the p-value was just above 0.05? The result would be non-significant, but could we really state the data was normally distributed with any certainty? Fortunately, there are a couple of other indicators we can assess. Normal data sets are symmetrical, so we can look at the skew value, which should be zero for a perfectly symmetrical data set. This is also why we find the mean and median are the same in normally distributed data. In general, a skew value between minus 2 and 2 can be consistent with a normal distribution. We can also calculate a kurtosis value. In a normally distributed data set, the data tails off from the central position in a defined way. The kurtosis value can indicate if your data tails off too quickly or slowly. A kurtosis value between minus 2 and 2 can be consistent with a normally distributed data set. Using these three measures, we can at least give some justification for using a parametric test to analyse our data with, even if we cannot state with absolute certainty that our data set is normally distributed. So let's run the script. First, track up to the beginning of the first line and click to place the cursor at the beginning of the script. You can now run the script line by line by pressing Ctrl R if you are using a Windows or Linux computer or Command Option R if you are using a Mac. Each time we run a line, it appears in the console window along with any results the command produces. So let's start by defining our variable using the C operator. As you can see, there is now a plus sign in the R console. This is because I have split the variable over two lines. I need to run both lines to complete the declaration of the variable. This data was taken from table 5.8 in the book and consists of the body length of 50 ladybirds of the species Adala bipunctata. The question is whether the data can be considered normally distributed or not. To do the Shapiro-Wilk test, we use the Shapiro.test function. As you can see, it gives us a p-value of 0.2307. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. A p-value of 0.2307 is above our 0.05 transition probability, indicating that we cannot reject the null hypothesis and that there is not a significant difference between the distribution of our data and that expected from the data if it was normally distributed. However, this p-value is a long way from a value of 1, which would indicate a perfect correlation between the observed and expected values, and although I would never expect my data to be perfect, I would like more evidence on which to base my conclusion. We can do this by looking at the kurtosis and skewness values, but these functions are not an intrinsic part of the R program. 
First, we have to install the package E1017. We do that by running the install packages command. It starts by asking me to choose a CRAN mirror. This is the computer server somewhere in the world that I will download this package from. I'm going to choose the UK Bristol site as this is closest to Worcester. I select it and press OK. The package is then loaded. I now instruct R to load the package using the library command. I can now use the functions that are contained within this library. The ketosis function gives me a value of approximately minus 0 0.486, which is close to zero and within our minus two to two guide range, suggesting that our data tails off appropriately. The function skewness gives me an approximate value of minus 0 0.044. This is even closer to zero and again within our minus two to two guide range and suggests the data is relatively symmetrical, something confirmed by the mean and median values being very similar at 5.08 and 5.00 respectively. Taken together, I feel that I can make justification for my data being normally distributed and that it would be appropriate to use parametric data for further analysis. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test, or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.